Week four, momentum and impulse. Momentum is the quantity of motion. How much is it moving? Or another way to say it is the ability to resist a change in motion. How hard is it to get that thing to change which way it's going? I like to look at myself walking down the hallway and I've got my briefcase and I'm trucking down the hallway because I'm late to class like always. And there's some poor little freshman who comes around the corner. I have a lot of ability to resist change in motion. That tiny little freshman is not going to change which way I'm going. I'm going to change which way that freshman's going. So there's a formula that goes with it, and the formula is P equals MV. The P stands for momentum, M stands for mass, and V stands for velocity. Now, if you put your units in it, remember masses are measured in kilograms and velocities are measured in meters per second. And so a kilogram meter per second are the units for momentum. And remember I told you at the beginning of class that combo that looked like a bunch of jumbled is actually something real. It stands for momentum. Now, I love sports. And so when I look at this formula and I think of P equals MV, I actually reverse it around and I do M times V equals P or MVP, most valuable player. So that's how I tend to remember the formula. Now you'll notice in the formula, there's a mass and there's a velocity. So how does something get a big momentum? Well, one of the ways that you can do it is to have a big mass. So take something like this. A train. Trains have a lot of mass because not only do they have the engine, but they usually have all of the cars behind them and the cars are loaded. It takes a long time to change the motion of this train. It's not going to stop on a dime. It's going to take it a half a mile to stop. That's why you do not want to get in the way of a train when it's moving because it has a big mass. It has a big momentum. Now, a lot of people think that it's just the mass that matters. Well, what if I have something like this? Okay, it's just the casing, it's not the bullet in the casing. But what if I had a bullet? While this bullet is tiny, it's moving super duper fast. Think about it, it's gonna take a lot to stop the motion of a bullet. It goes through a lot of things before it actually slows down and stops. So bullets have a big momentum. So it's the M and the V that matter. If you have a big mass, you have a big momentum. If you have a big velocity, you have a big momentum. Now, what about something that has a big mass and a big velocity? Something like a rocket. Huge mass going super fast. It is going to resist change. It does not want to stop, and you better get out of the way if it's coming at you. That is momentum. Now, I love things that involve momentum. Why? Because I have a big mass, so I always have a lot of momentum. It's a couple of my favorite things to do was bumper cars with my kids, and the reason was because I always had a bigger mass than them, and so I'd be trucking along, you know, coming from the diagonal corner as them, and I would hit them, and they would just go flying. They thought it was hilarious when it happened. I thought it was funny, too, to see their reaction. The other thing that I like to do is to go tubing down the hill uh, in the wintertime, and I love this because you get a whole bunch of people and everybody grabs hands and you've got a big mass and you get trucking down that hill and it's hard to get you to stop. You keep going and going and going and it's so much fun. Absolutely love it. Okay, now. The other term that you need in week four is impulse. Impulse is a change in momentum. So take that train. 
it was going a certain speed and now it got into town. So it slowed down a little. It changed its velocity. When you change momentum, it's called an impulse. So if that train were to slow down, that would be called an impulse. Another way to describe impulse is a force that's applied over time. So there are two different equations for impulse. One says take the mass times the velocity still, just like you did with momentum, mv equals p, except we're gonna look at the change in velocity. That's the definition that goes with change. The second formula is impulse equals force times time. It's a force that's applied over time. Now let me give you some examples about force and time. I took these two equations and put them together. And then I solved for f. This is what it turned out to be. It doesn't really matter if you can solve it or not. I would have made you do it in class, but we're not going to do it here, okay? But what I do want to tell you is that f is not a fraction right now, and this is a fraction. The t happens to be on the bottom of a fraction. If I had just a plain old number or just a plain old letter and I wanted to make it be a fraction, I would make it be over one. So if I had the number four, I would do four over one. So if I had f, I would make it be f over one. So the f technically is in the numerator. The t technically is in the denominator. So if they are in opposite spots, when you do something to one of them, the other one is gonna respond in the opposite manner. Now, let me give you an example. So I have here Michigan State alumni, Duncan Keith, and Duncan Keith plays for the Blackhawks, typically, except we aren't doing any Blackhawks stuff right now. Okay, and let's pretend that Duncan Keith is gonna get in a fight on the hockey rink, okay? If he does not see the punch coming, it's gonna smack him in the jaw instantly. That means that there's very little time that it takes for the punch to land. If there's very little time, the force is going to do the opposite, which means the force is going to be huge. Duncan Keith is going to feel that punch, and it's going to hurt like a son of a gun. Okay, now, let's suppose that Duncan, see, Duncan Keith sees the punch coming, and he turns his head right as he gets hit. That's called rolling with the punch. And if Duncan Keith sees it and he twists his head and he goes the same way the punch is going, then it's gonna take a little bit more time to land that punch than it would have if I just hit him out of the blue. If he saw it coming and he rolled with the punch, it takes more time for the punch to land. Therefore, the force does the opposite and it's gonna be much less. It won't hurt quite as bad, okay? Now, let's talk about another situation. Another situation that I wanna talk about is with a bat, okay? So some of you have played baseball at some point in your life, and I think many of you have. And let's talk about bunting versus hitting a home run. So if I want to bunt, I want my force to be small. I don't want it to go very far. I don't want to have a lot of force on that ball. I want it literally to like trickle off my back. So if I want the force to be small, then the opposite has to happen with the time. The time needs to go up. Now, when I used to coach and I used to teach how to bunt, I would tell my athletes to extend their arms out. Their elbow was still bent, but to extend their arms out. And as the ball was coming in and hitting the bat, they were supposed to cushion or bend their elbows so that the ball was on the bat for a longer time. If time is big, then the force is small. Now, what if I want to hit a home run? If I want to hit a home run, I want a huge force, which means the time on the bat has to be really small. So I'm gonna take, when I do my full swing, I want that ball to hit and pop off really fast. So I do a follow through and I get my bat the heck out of the zone so that it hits and bounces off fast. If there is less time on the bat, 
then I'm going to increase the amount of force that I have. Impulse and momentum.